it's gonna be a big game for us, you know, uh, it's like final home stretch, last couple games at home, you know, and it's special, it's Civil War, so you can't let them get us our house, so it's a big game for us. And the last one, you've been part of a lot of these, is this extra special for you? Uh, it's, you know, my final one. Uh, uh, I've enjoyed it, you know, all the Civil Wars, you know, they've, they've meant a lot. I know it means a lot to our fans, so, you know, I want to go out on the right note against these guys. You've had a week without a game. What do you guys been, been working on some rest, some practice? What's been kind of the schedule? Um, we had two, you know, pretty hard practices, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Coach gave us a day off yesterday. So he just tried to get us going game speed and, you know, get our conditioning up and then, you know, let us take the day off. And then we got two more practices to get ready for him. So we're going to be going over their stuff now and, and figuring out the, the true game plan. Is a week off help? Help get some things secure and taken care of? Just knew, uh, you know, we're going to, you know, we're working on our presses. Mm -hmm. uh, just have more time to focus on that instead of focusing on, you know, their, you know, what they do. We're just focusing on us for those two days and just getting ourselves ready. So I think it did help. Johnny, you said after you guys lost the Civil War that you weren't going to watch the film. Getting ready for this one, did you stay true to your word? You didn't watch the film or did you guys dust it off? Uh, as a team, we didn't watch the film. Uh, I, I watched it a couple of days ago, though, just you know, just to see what happened and, and what we did. So, uh, but I did stay true for a while, though. What did you, what did you see? see yeah. uh, took some bad shots on offense, on the offensive end, defensively. Uh, well, we didn't rebound the ball well at all either. And then defensively, we let them do what they wanted to do. You know, we didn't you know stay true to the scouting report. So that's something we're gonna focus on this game. You say they beat you the, the most, or was the most dominant loss you guys have had in Pac-12 play? Uh, I would say Cal. You know, the Cal game. I think you know, watching watching that film, I think they they really truly you know they beat us. You know, they just outplayed us. That game, you know, it was just some you know we didn't play very well, and we were still in it towards the end. So uh, I, I wouldn't say that was the most dominating loss we've had, and it could be, it easily could have been changed. And lately, all these losses are like by two points. Does, does that weigh on you? Because one play here or there, it's turned around. You have those wins and stuff. Yeah, coach. You know, coach always says, you know, it takes those you know tough plays. We're getting beaten. You know, we're always getting beaten in the final, you know, final four minute segments. And uh, we just got to make more special plays in order to come out on top. And uh, the last one, you know, we got down by 20 against Arizona State, and that just we lost. Ended up losing by two. So you know, that that said a lot too. That that really hurt too. And there's guys like you who were part of that insane run last year. Should that help down the stretch as you position yourself for maybe getting back there? Um, you know, there's, yeah, there's a lot of us. You know, I think there's five or five or six of us that were here for the NCAA run. So, you know, it's just we just got to, you know, keep, you know, uh, relaying coach's message and, you know, tell them what we got to do and how hard we truly got to play in order to make this run happen. Are we going to see more of the press this week? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's proven to be a good weapon for us. So I think, you know, we've got to utilize, utilize it a little more. That really guys got you back into ASU. Just can I tell you, I mean, that seemed like it was really working. Was that as good or USC when both those about as good as we've seen the press? Yeah. Um, I remember the, the, the last time it truly worked that well was probably I was like a sophomore. We were down at UCLA about 20 at half, and then we put the press on them and came back. So, uh, you know, the press has, you know, helped us a, a lot, a lot, a lot. So that's something we're going to start using more, I think. Hey, Johnny, down there Dan said that it was you – and also Elgin came in and really changed the energy. What does Elgin bring? Okay. It seemed like he brought it really well in the early part of the season, and now it's finally coming back. Yeah, he just is a, you know, an amazing athlete, explosive, uh, and you know, can really be a difference maker. You know, he can somewhat be the X factor. And another person that helped us too was Waverly Austin, you know, because when we were pressing, we kind of leave the rim exposed, and he was, you know, being a big presence in there protecting the rim, so that helped us out a lot too. But yeah, Elgin, you know, he could be something special for us. You know, he had a couple hard times uh, during this year, but you know, it happens to everybody. So as long as he comes comes around, you know, he still can be special for us. What was your reaction when you saw Marcus Smart shut the fan? What was he thinking? What was your reaction when you saw it? I, that's all was my reaction, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was he thinking? I know, you know, I, I immediately was like, the dude must have, you know, said a racial slur uh, that just snapped, you know, he. Marcus Smart probably thought was kind of frustrated that the guy turned the ball over on his team and he got the foul. So that's just my thought was, oh, he must have said the racial slur, got under his skin, but you can't react like that.
Do you guys talk about that, how to handle situations where fans get involved? You mean you had to deal with it a little bit in Tempe? Uh, you know, we coach, you know, uh, he hasn't really harped on it too much, but, you know, he's always just said, you know, stay in between the lines. Don't worry about what they do. It's part of the game. You know, they're going to they gonna get personal, da 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 So, you know, uh, coach just says stay in between the lines. Do you, a, do you think that was a learning lesson for the, kind of the nation as a whole in regards to, like, how to be appropriate during the games, I guess, even though they're isolated incidents? As a player? No, as, I mean, just for anybody, I guess. For the fans, I guess, in general. I did just write a paper on this too. This, you know, this little <laughs> situation. So, kind of did some research, and uh, you know, some people said that uh, it was a kind of a learning experience for other people. Some people said it was inevitable that you know it was just about time that a player snapped in college and went into the stands. But you know, for me, it's just emotions were flaring and it just slipped up. You know, and I don't think it's gonna happen too often. Did you write the paper before all this? Before today? No, before the Marcus Smart. Or oh right no, I, I wrote it after. Yeah, I just turned it in uh, yesterday. As a matter of fact, what kind of class? Uh, sports and politics. And what did you write about? Uh, athletes and society. Huh? But you wrote it in kind of four days, so it's kind of a quick, a quick one after seeing what happened there. Yeah, because I uh, I was writing it on uh, on like the Sherman topic of mm -hmm. how people were kind of making that blowing it out of proportion, and then once I saw that happen, I just you know changed the topic real quick. Did you talk about the ASU incident at all and what you saw there? Yeah. Was that part of the paper? Yeah. Talked about how, you know, sometimes fans can get a little wild. And I just said it's part of the game, though. Some, it's part of the game, but then sometimes you can't cross that line. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you talk to all to Jason about his experiences and where he may have uh, gone wrong or stayed within the bounds there? Uh, I, you know, I was watching that on the bench, and uh, once I saw him over there pacing and kind of, you know, trying to calm himself down, I was just hoping that none of the fans, you know, got too close and said something because I knew that he might, you know, just trip and they said something, and I was like, oh man, no, I hope he doesn't go in the stands. Mm. But they, they, they controlled it, so that was good. Did you hear the fans say something to him? Nah, I'm not sure what they said. I just know that they got real close to him, you know. As he was walking back and forth, they kind of got out of their little designated area and walked close to him. How, how quickly was that resolved by the security over there? I heard it was handled pretty well. Yeah, uh, a couple of our coaches, uh, you know, Coach Kenya, uh, trainer uh, Clay, they kind of go over there pretty fast and just, you know, kind of separated them. So didn't really escalate nothing like that. This is the 15 year anniversary of the pit crew. What does it mean to have the support of your student body and have the pit crew there in your for this long. It, it means the world. Uh, you know, my four years, they've been supporting me like crazy. Uh, just having them in the, in, in, the, in the stands, just, you know, when we're doing well, they're always there to pick us up. Even if we're not doing well, you know, they're, they're going to pick us up even more and then we can feed off that. So I just want to be able to play hard and give the fans something to cheer about. Johnny, when you look in the last Civil War offensively, is it kind of just a, an anomaly? Throw that one away with the struggles that Joe and Dot and Mike had in that one. You guys know that it's probably not going to be that bad again. Yeah, we uh, we know we're a different team, even though we've uh, we haven't really shown it as much yet. But we're a different team, just you know, together and physically wise, uh, physicality wise. So you know, it's going to be a, a completely different game than it was last time. Well, we see the rotation at all um, kind of tighten up as a season for the rest of the games. I know that Dan has used a lot of different players in a lot of these games, and it could be either positive or negative in these games. What, what are your views on that? Man, I have no clue. Uh, Coach has a tough, tough job ahead of him because we have a lot of weapons, and I don't know how he's gonna, you know, starting to, uh, you know, narrowing it down like he usually does at this time of the season. So I don't know. I don't know what he's gonna do. I really have no clue. Is it kind of hard for you guys as a team to um, not really know what that separation is from a game to game basis? Uh, uh, yeah, you know, sometimes when you're sitting on the bench, you know, knowing the rotation, you know, you're like, okay, I'm about to go in, I'm about to get my mind right, because you have a minute to you usually go in. Uh, but, you know, you don't really know because we have so many different weapons and so many different combinations that coaches use. Uh, you, you never really know when your, when your number's going to get called. So just, just got to stay ready. It's been that way with the point guards. Has that been tough at all with you kind of starting and then kind of coming off and minutes, and you had big minutes one game and then not so much the next? I just tell coach whatever he feels is best for the team. Just, you know, I'm good with him. I'm always going to ride with him. Uh, just do do what you think is best, whatever's going to help us the most. And, you know, I trust him and whatever he whatever he does, I'm good with. Ben had a great game against the Beavers last time. Given their size advantage against you guys, they're a lot bigger and maybe a lot longer, how important is it? him to kind of repeat that and then Waverly as well on the front line. 
Yeah, man, they got to play hard. Uh, that's the main thing. Coach always telling him bend his knees. So if he bends his knees, then, you know, he's going to have a lot of success in the post like he had last game. And, you know, if he stops getting all those weak fouls, then it will be good. Keep him on the floor.